Hey guys, Alan here. Welcome back to the workshop. Uh, I've been doing a whole lot of little bits and pieces lately, so nothing interesting enough to, to film. But one of the things I was doing was doing a bit of a tidy up and looking for storage spaces. And that got me thinking that uh, maybe it was a good idea to share what I've done with some storage and invite uh, other suggestions from other viewers and see if we can all learn something from each other and pick up some tips. So let's get into it. Okay, well let's start off by looking at um, the space underneath the drill press table here. There's obviously a floor standing model with this space underneath. So I made up this little uh, roller cabinet. Um, which is obviously easy to roll out of the way. Um, it's made out of 19 thick, 90 millimeter thick uh, chipboard. Just held together with particle board screws. And I did put a, a back into it to uh, give it some stiffness because this, for example, is quite heavy and I've had other heavy things standing on it, so a bit of structure is good. Uh, it's just sitting on uh, some little um, bearer things which have the which are set wide enough so that they can straddle the base of the press. Um, I've set it up to take these plastic uh, stillages sort of drawers, like drawers, and put lots of small stuff in there, whip it out to whatever. So that was a, a quick and easy thing to do. And uh, want some useful space under the drill press. So this was another useful space saver. Uh, mounting this, this is where I've got all my uh, taps and dies. Um, but mounting this box uh, up off the bench like that meant uh, I was able to uh, retain that uh, area of bench which I would otherwise have lost so it's just uh, on a, a frame that's hanging from the um, this is just on a, a frame which hangs from the uh, a steel beam at the back there but it's definitely better to have the bench space underneath uh, some more space utilisation underneath the bench. Let's pull one of these out. So, um, I think you can see the basic idea. It's a three-quarter inch, uh, three inch steel tube frame um, with a couple of runners for each of these plastic boxes. I actually found these, or I had these uh, boxes came from a university uh, holiday job which I had when I was a storm and they were throwing them out but they've been really useful. I use them for um, off cuts of material which are too short for a rack but too long to throw away. So that, that worked out pretty well. Okay, we've got some more uh, tubular steel um, framework here, this time for some drawers from an old wardrobe. But these drawers, are, oh, they've been in this framework now for nearly 40 years probably. Um, perhaps you can see they're actually very well made drawers with dovetailing and uh, uh, nice sides. They've, they've definitely got some strength to them. And um, in the framework here, I've got um, some angle iron, built in some angle iron runners. Which I think you'll be able to see in this picture. So these have worked out very well. Um, this is the uh, only bit of old indoor furniture I think which I've used. Oh no, there's one kitchen cabinet. Now this uh, unit here is on wheels as well, I won't bother wheeling it out, but it's all about uh, flexibility and uh, being able to uh, get access to things easily. Oh and the, the white thing that you can see over there, you might be curious about it, that's a little um, uh, tractor that I use for moving my caravan around, it's actually very effective. So of course like many people I've got uh, some of these uh, roller cabinets and these are really good and uh, you've got drawers of various widths and depths and uh, it's really great and this one's got a, a, a useful trick as well in that um, 
you can um, shut these um, close these flaps so you can keep all the dirt and crap out I'm a one man band here so I'm not really worried about security as such but it's nice to be able to close them up so you don't uh, have dirt and stuff going in them it wasn't a cheap set mind you but it's very good quality now one thing about this though that really ticks me off there's a A grade storage in the top here under this lift up lid but because to preserve floor space I have this cabinet pushed right back against the wall I can't open that and um, I don't know if anybody's got any smart ideas on how to solve that problem I'd be really interested the only thing I've come up with is in fact to cut the lid off um, about two inches away from the, the back and put a new piano hinge in but beyond that it's annoying so if anyone's got any answers for that I'd be really pleased to hear it oh, one other thing the keys on this are really cute they um, heads of the keys fold down, I don't know whether you can see that from the distance, but that uh, means you don't uh, catch them as you walk past the cabinet, which is really good. And of course, use the space above here for stuff I don't have to grab all the time. So this cabinet is obviously a refugee from uh, an office, bought from an uh, office disposals place. Um, Fortunately, uh, this one had lots of shelves in it, and again, I've got these little stillages so you can come out, use them as drawers, carry stuff over to where you're working. And I've said I've got two different heights of um, of these things, uh, and they work out really well. Um, and I've also got these uh, smaller ones at the top here. Um, you can buy these, well, I think, pretty much anywhere. They're just a, a standard um, partition storage thing, little dividers. But again, you, um, in many ways they're better than drawers because you can whip them out and carry them over to where you're working. But uh, office furniture like this can be really good. Uh, I don't remember how much I paid for it, but I don't think it was terribly much. Uh, bought second hand. Um, so, there you go. Another idea. So a bit more office furniture. Got a five drawer cabinet here. Um, I think these are outlawed in offices because with a bit of weight in the top they come dangerously uh, um, uh, top heavy. And also this model doesn't have anything which, uh, in the later filing cabinets, they have a mechanism which only allows one drawer to open at a time. Well this doesn't have any of that. Um, so you could pull the, all of them out and end up wearing it. But being aware of the limitations and working with them, it's still good cheap storage. The drawers uh, are on very heavy duty runners, ball, ball, not really ball, I suppose they're ball bearings, but they're linear ball bearing things. Anyway, uh, aware of the issues, I um, have got my really heavy stuff in the bottom here. So you can see here, for example, these milling cutters, um, there's probably about 30 kilos. 20 or 30 kilos in that bottom drawer. And I've got uh, the taper shank drills um, in, in this drawer. These guys add up to quite a bit of weight too. But as you can see, the drawers run freely and uh, provide you've got the weight in the bottom and uh, you don't act like a twit opening all the drawers at once. Um, it's good, cheap uh, and effective storage. In another reuse of uh, office type storage, um, these uh, grey things here are 8 by 5 index card holders. I don't know where they came from, a library perhaps, I don't know, I can't remember. But I've got a heap of them. And uh, I made um, uh, another one of these cabinets in, in the same way that I made the thing that goes under the drill press. So it's just um, squares or rectangles of 19mm um, chipboard held together with uh, particle board screws, butt joints and uh, I bought these uh, extending um, drawer runners and just pot riveted them on the sides and I've got uh, fairly hefty stuff in all of these drawers and it works really well and here you can see, perhaps you can see you know, a lot of these uh, clamp down um, hold down clamps. It's not exactly a block of a solid block of steel in there, there's a lot of weight in there. 
and you can see it still slides really easily. So that was, uh, that was a good result. Another storage idea. Now some of this stuff's a bit hard to uh, film but perhaps you can see I've got a roller cart um, here that happily fits in between the two milling machines. So that's my surface plate sits on that. Makes it easier to wheel it to where I want it to be. And uh, I think I've shown this in a, another video but you can see here another use of space. I've got the milling machine up on um, riser blocks which creates a, a position for this um, um, pallet track to, uh, to hide under. So that's pretty useful as well. And the um, horizontal bandsaw manages to also snug in there between the two uh, machines. So that little uh, island block in the middle is pretty chockers, but uh, it actually works out quite well. So I'd say that is a very efficient use of space. Now another um, storage idea. On top of my um, the ram of the milling machine is flat. I thought well there's a space that's crying out for something. So I made a rack um, for the storing NT40 tool holders. And um, I think you can get the idea here. It was actually made from three uh, lengths of uh, downpipe and there's a, a plastic liner on the top so that these pieces aren't in contact with the metal, avoid any uh, rust uh, development opportunities. Just a hole saw through that and this piece is pop riveted on and you can see of course underneath the holes for the, uh, the thin end of the NT40 taper. Well, that worked out very well. Um, gave me somewhere to store things that's close handy and used an otherwise um, vacant space. So here's another bit of uh, space being pressed into service. The space underneath the lathe. You can see I've managed to squeeze the air compressor in under there and it seems quite happy under there. And while I'm in this corner of the workshop, um, this cabinet here has uh, proven to be quite useful too. It's a little bit, it's a very old one, but instead of having swing doors, it actually has sliding doors. Which is uh, really useful for me in this situation, because with swing doors I wouldn't be able to get them open. So that's turned uh, an otherwise useless dead corner into one where I can put stuff in. Oh, and that reminds me, my lead's on the scrounge for a tow ball. I've got a couple of spares, so I guess you can have one of these. Um, they're both three and a half thousand kilos, so it doesn't matter which one I give him. And I might give him, might give him this one because it's got flats on it. You can get hold of it with a spanner to loosen it. The other one didn't have the flats. Anyway, back on back on storage. So that was a useful. One also, of course, it gives me the bit of extra flat space to. Uh, put stuff on and leave in a mess. <laughs> That's the way it goes sometimes. So this is the only um, salvaged kitchen cupboard or household cupboard that I've uh, given room in the workshop to. In general I'm not a fan of them because they're not particularly robust, they're not designed for carrying heavy weights and normally by the time they're retired from use in a kitchen or something they're pretty much crap anyway. But this guy was in pretty reasonable shape and uh, as you can see I put an extra shelf in it and uh, all I put in this one is uh, woodworking stuff, you know, routers and the like. There's not a lot of weight in that. That uh, red cabinet in the corner there has a bit of a story to it. So it's manufactured to be a roller chest and it had a set of drawers on the top which weren't much good either. But the biggest issue with it is it's, it wasn't big enough to be very useful. But worse, uh, you can perhaps see it's not very deep which meant it was quite unstable and on wheels it was a bit dangerous. So um, it, it hung around for a while and I finally realised I could whip the wheels off it and stick it on the wall as a wall cabinet. And as a wall cabinet it's very much more successful. So that's where my... Um, compressed air tools and things live in that corner. Uh, the wheels went on to uh, that uh, cabinet that was under the drill press by the way so not much got wasted. 
and perhaps you can see there's a bit of a custom made thing sits on the top edge of the thing and creates a shelf so I've got room for a, a little stack of uh, nail guns and things up there so that's a rack I made for my uh, long sliding F clamps um, so how much detail of it you can see from um, down here but basically it's a piece of uh, angle iron that's been slotted and uh, the heels of the clamps are just pushed back into the slots so that's quite an efficient um, use of space so I guess the next thing to look at is the mezzanine floor uh, or platform which covers the end bay of the workshop and creates a platform 6 metres wide and 2.4 metres deep and we'll start off having a look at the ladder which I put in place to uh, make it easy to get uh, um, on, get up on there whenever I wanted to so this isn't going to be so easy to film but perhaps you can see ladders just hooked into the ceiling so that's pretty easy to swing down when it's needed and perhaps you can see that I've got a I think you call these a lynch pin um, spring loaded pin thing and the ladder pivots on um, this axle running through this pair of these brackets so and I can whip that, that out easily to remove the ladder it's just passed through this top rung so this bracket's made up with a bit of plate a bit of angle iron and they're just bolted to the face of this beam so that all worked out pretty well Oh, and perhaps you can see from down there I removed the, uh, the top rung of the ladder to make it easier to walk through this space ok let's go upstairs and give you a closer look I'm sure how well this is going to work out I've got the GoPro strapped to my scone <laughs> don't know well, how well this will go So up here there's uh, enough room to stand up under the centre but not out to the sides. So I've made those stillages on wheels that you can see there and I can bring them into the middle, load and unload them and so on. And um, that guy there is a cage that I can lift up and down to bring heavy things up here. And that's another wheeled stillage and some bits of crap lurking in the background. But this has proved to be a very useful space and uh, I might say some years ago it was rather chockers with uh, family stuff shall we say <laughs> which didn't uh, really belong in a workshop but patiently over some time I was able to, uh, to move it on and that's the way it goes I'm sure you've all got similar stories of how your garage gets consumed with stuff that doesn't really belong there and hey that's life Okay, well from this vantage point at the top of the ladder it's not a bad thing, way to uh, look at some other bits and pieces so there's my uh, uh, speakers, these are fairly big boys actually um, 10 inch drivers 20, 20 uh, hertz uh, frequency response but they're quite large and I got a bit tired of falling over them when they were standing on the floor so I hooked them up and they're uh, now living um, uh, hanging from the inside of the, the gable end of the shed and right out the way so that was a, a good move but looking around to the side um, I've got these uh, I call it a shelf, it's really a platform that runs fully along the side and they can take a huge amount of weight those things they're uh, on steel, big heavy steel brackets off the, um, off the portal frames um, swing around this way, you can see uh, it's a storage rack for um, longer pieces of stock, particularly wood. And um, we looked earlier at um, 
uh, a set of drawers which I think you can see down there in that uh, large shelf unit inside the front door that's uh, I think it's about 2.5 meters tall and I'll show you a piece of the steel section that it's made of in a little bit but it's super heavy duty and I've got uh, quite a lot of uh, lathe accessories and chucks and things uh, on the lower two shelves and this thing that can take it it's very heavy duty so there is one more thing to just comment on while I'm up here looking down we can see that the uh, there's a relatively small space between the lathe and the the milling machine but I work in the workshop on my own I don't need to allow for both machines to be in use at the same time so they can both work off the same access space in the middle and um, it's a much more space efficient arrangement for me and it's one of the reasons why I can fit so much stuff in here because I've got two big milling machines, a big lathe and a small lathe hydraulic press and some other stuff and it all seems to fit in quite well but I'm making very good use of the space but still, it can always be better and always interested in other ideas well, that's it. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, perhaps you could uh, click the like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, hit the bell if you want to be told when the next one's coming up. But in any case, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you soon.